How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? And welcome to the show that not only lives up to the hype, but it is the hype. I think I said something like this in the last episode, but Full Metal Alchemist is one of those shows where even when the plot isn't doing anything crazy in a particular episode, I am still just more than happy to check in on these characters that I have grown to love. And I can't say that about every show. Like, I love Naruto, love the characters in it, there are for sure some boring episodes. Bungo Stray Dogs, I have a ton of fun with that show, but when the plot isn't kicking itself into high gear, I am bored as hell. Full Metal Alchemist feels like One Piece to me right now, where even if I'm not watching a particularly eventful episode, it still feels worth it just to check in on some friends. All that build up to say that I'm excited to see what Ed and Al are getting up to in this episode. Full Metal Alchemist, sir! Huh? We, we do, do apologize, apologize in advance, advance for, for this! this. Huh? <laughs> Jesus, he got the full wind-up in that one. I don't think your advanced apology covered that. I saw the wind resistance on that slap. You don't have to do everything all on your own, you know. You can lean on other people. Like us. What are your names again? I'm sorry, I did not learn your names. I really didn't expect you two to be hanging around this long. They have the most expendable designs I've ever seen. I mean, this one's just Colonel Mustang with tits and a mole. My punishment? For slapping you? Huh? Nothing, I had it coming. <laughs> What's got you two so scared of me? I love how scared they were. Oh my god, thank you so much. Oh, I'm gonna throw up. I was the one who did the slapping. <laughs> I almost forgot. I have an even less pleasant lecture in store for me today. Oh, gross. What is that, his idea hair? Don't show me Ed's antennae doing its business. I don't want to see that shit. I don't want to see Ed's little hair strand getting erect when he gets an idea. Uh, I was in a really rough fight. You did it again, moron! How could you treat my precious underwear like that, alchemy freak? Does Winry not know what Ed's job is? Build him an arm for fighting. This is like giving somebody a prosthetic eye and being like, All right, good as new. Now I've designed this one to fall out of your skull if you open your eyelids, so don't be doing any of that now. Aw, <sighs> uh, was that your girlfriend? My girlfriend, no way! It's nothing to be embarrassed about. When I was your age, I had a different girlfriend every week. Oh, all right, Lieutenant, I see you. Don't worry about it, Ed. When I was your age, I pulled. I mean, I fucking pulled. I would fall asleep between a pair of tits in Berlin and wake up between a pair in Brussels. All right, I was a menace. Hey, hey, Al. Brother. You know you can come to the room, right? This is absolutely not the direction I expected Al's character to take. Honestly, I probably should have seen it coming, but this is way heavier than what I was prepared for. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Kid, get the fuck out of here. This is the last thing Al's crisis needs right now. You know what, though? Can alchemists, like, even create life? Like, no, right? Like, Al's whole thing is that he's afraid that he's, like, a construct that Ed created. But there's no, like, uh, precedence of that happening. I like how the butcher dude put new fake lore into Al's head. Ed said to look near the west exit, there'd be someone familiar there who I'd recognize right away. Uh oh my god, how tall is Major Armstrong? Alright, well, fucking, how tall is that? Armstrong is six foot nine? And now you're badly injured. Uh, it, it's not your fault. You can't blame yourself for this. I blame her for this. Your arm stopped working mid-fight. You didn't drink your milk. <laughs> Why should I? I hate it. You're going to be small and stupid forever if you keep using that stupid excuse! Is there like a one short joke per episode quota they're trying to meet here? No wonder Ed's so self-conscious, his world is ruthless to short people. What is the milk industry funding this show? We got Big Milk pushing its propaganda through Full Metal Alchemist? Shut up! I don't have to drink it if I don't wanna! Oh, Armstrong's a milk drinker if I've ever seen one. That dude bleeds milk. This guy's practically lactating. Sure, no problem. Yo, Ed, my boy! 
Is it true you brought a pretty blonde girl into your room to service you? What are you, dressed for a night on the town? When did this dude become a big Hollywood director? This dude looks ready to snort Adderall in the bathroom of a nightclub. Come on, no need for that. Why don't you spend the night at my place? Really? Yes, of course. My wife and daughter will be delighted to have you. Definitely don't spend the night at Michael Bay's place. I don't care if he has a wife and daughter. This guy's dressed like the shadiest dude you could ever meet. Winry's gonna end up so far at the bottom of a pyramid scheme, people are gonna think her corpse was a pharaoh. <laughs> Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist. I like that the announcer is always up to date with whatever's happening in the show. I thought they recorded like two versions of his lines. I didn't know every episode had a unique transition. But there are some things that I actually need to be told. <laughs> Just what am I gonna do with you? Give her a place to stay and nothing else. That is all you are required and expected to do. Listen up, boys. You try anything with my daughter, and you will answer to me. Winry, get out of this house! That was a crazy joke. That was a psychotic move on Hughes's part. You know how many hate comments I would get if I tried to pull that joke? Oh, I get it. When Full Metal Alchemist pulls out a gun for a joke, it's the best anime of all time. But when I do it, I'm promoting gun violence in America. You've got such a big body now. This show just gonna end with everybody learning a lesson in body positivity? Because I think they could all use it right now. Maybe you wanted to say that my soul and my memories are really artificial constructions you created. This is all super sad and tense, but from Ed's perspective, Al must seem like an irrational partner who just brings up problems you didn't know you had in your relationship. Like, all of this is coming out of nowhere for Ed. So were you ever going to tell me you were cheating on me? What are you talking about? I'm not cheating on you. Then who the fuck did I dream about you sleeping with last night, Michael? Or is there more you wanted to say? Okay. Oh, I love how Ed just like swallows his rage and calmly walks away. Assumedly, because he respects Al's concerns and wants to cool off before continuing the discussion. Like what a great big brother move on his part. What a what a great show of restraint here. Al, you Where did that come from? Everybody's still super confused about where your emotional crisis just came from. He can't eat anymore, he can't sleep, he can't feel cold or warmth. He's my little brother and I'm supposed to protect him and I did this. <laughs> oh my God, that was horrendous. Just ask him and I'm sure you'll see. No, I'm, I'm too afraid. I'm too scared of what he'll say. Oh my God, this is horrendous. Oh no, that was unyieldingly sad. It's brutal that Ed's biggest insecurity is that Al would blame him for losing his body. And now, Al has kind of accidentally proven him right. I don't remember that one. I won the fight, but she shot me down. Oh, did she? Okay, definitely don't end the conversation like that if the plan is to make up. You're telling me that all those memories are lies? Sorry. Oh, oh, Al's delivery. <laughs> My right arm, did I lose it or is it still with me? Yeah, it's still there, mister. It should be fine. Terrifying question to ask. That's one of those questions where if you have to ask, odds are you're not gonna like the answer. Brief episode transition. If you like what you're seeing here and you wanna get more content not found anywhere else, make sure you consider subscribing to my Patreon, where you get access to dozens of exclusive videos not found anywhere else, including my reactions to Blue Lock and Food Wars. Top of that, you also get access to my private Discord server and access to all the live streams I've recorded in the past and will record in the future. Finally, you also just help out the page a ton and ensure that I'm able to keep putting out as much content as physically possible. But if Patreon's not really your thing, I do have a second channel. My second channel, called Honestly Brutal, is where I talk about video games, movies, all stuff not related to anime, in a fun, analytical sense. I just put up a video on there about Street Fighter VI that I'm super proud of. Go check that out if you want more content from me, but don't want to chip into the Patreon. And now, on to the next one. Boom, look at that, hat's coming off. 
Wait, you thought I was wearing a hat because my hair looked bad? Nah, bitch. The hat's part of the hairstyling process. The power of one man doesn't amount to much. I do love how varied all the locations in this show are. Like, I feel like we're getting to see a lot of really cool settings I don't normally see in anime. Ishvala is kind of a dumb name, but at least they didn't call it Afghanishman or something. And in turn, they'll protect the ones they love. It seems like the least we tiny humans can do for each other. Sounds like a pyramid scheme. Speaking of which, how would you like to set your own hours and make $10,000 a week? I can get you 10 junk cars by this afternoon, each worth 10,000 grand once you spruce them up a little. Come on, Mustang, selling cars is in your name. You'll be a natural. I can't believe they gave this guy a line about pyramid schemes. You see what I mean about me and the show being in sync? I still need to organize and pack up all of my paperwork before we transfer to Central. I haven't had much time for sleep. It looked like you were in the middle of a pretty vivid dream there. I mean, I've been standing here watching you sleep for the past, oh, I don't know, 13 hours? Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Sir Bradley, your excellency. I know he's just here to say hi, but I really want to see Fuhrer Bradley fuck some shit up right now. It's not my fault. This show has conditioned me to expect cool shit whenever he shows up. This young man. Oh, you're injured. I thought a nice melon might cheer you up. I guess. Yes, thank you, sir! No, you're good, Ed. You had it right the first time. I guess was totally the proper response there. I heard you were injured, so I brought you this full, unopened honeydew melon. You're... Looking at me as though I've done something odd. Tell me what you know about the Philosopher's Stone. And I hope for your sake that you don't know too much. Fuhrer Bradley did not disappoint. We got German Tom Selleck over here using a cantaloupe and a low growl to intimidate Ed. I could not have asked for a better outcome. <laughs> I'm only kidding. There's no reason for you to be so uptight. Al was not having it with that joke. Dude is out of commission right now. Look at Al, he's reeling from that joke. At this time, suspicion is our strongest line of offense, and our only form of defense is discretion. Do not trust anyone. Definitely wasn't a good idea to start this conversation with a super threatening joke then. Well, with the way things have gone lately, Al and I decided we should go back and visit our old teacher. I think I'm too scared, brother. Jesus, what does she teach him? Fear? She'll make you a fine wife someday. Don't start that again! <laughs> I would rather talk about my wife anyway. <laughs> this poor guy just wants a friend to gush about his wife to. Oh, and tell the boys I said goodbye. Thanks, Mr. Hughes. I really appreciate your hospitality. I feel like the animation budget is being allocated strangely in this show. The animators just went absolutely fucking nuts on Winry's ponytail just then. Well, there are a couple of reasons. For starters, I'm a little tired of getting my ass kicked. Wait, is this some kind of combat teacher? Oh, I'm so hyped to meet Ed and Al's combat teacher. I always just assumed they trained with one another. It never occurred to me that they had like a full-on sensei. How could this even happen? And who could have orchestrated something as terrible as this? I've got to tell the Fuhrer right away. <laughs> oh, let's go. Are we going to see this dude fight? If his fighting is sick, it'll completely make up for the weird Vegas-loving alter ego he has. Hello, Lieutenant Colonel. It's nice to meet you. Well, actually, hello really isn't the word I'm looking for. Amazing line. Incredibly badass line from Lady D over here. Cool tattoo you got there. Great tattoo you got there. Please don't tell my wife. Those are your last words. Wouldn't you rather scream? <laughs> oh, oh, he got stabbed so fast. Is this dude not gonna put up a fight? Are they just gonna murder Maze Hughes right now? <laughs> Damn it. Oh, never mind, he put up a great fight. Good job, dude. Didn't know you had it in ya. Damn it. That's exactly how I feel. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, that big time sucks. Oh my, you're back again already. Who gets to hear about your daughter this time? <gasps> Lieutenant Colonel, you're bleeding. It's nothing. 
then I need a private line. Are we really about to kill this character whose whole personality is outwardly loving his wife and daughter? Is that what's about to happen right now? There's no way this show is that sadistic. It's an emergency! <sighs> I need to ask you to put down the receiver. Oh, this bitch! What is going on? Do not kill this man who has so clearly been written to die. I'm so upset I didn't realize until now that this guy was just a walking literary corpse. He's like a walking two days from retirement trope. This guy loves his family way too much to survive the series, doesn't he? You're observant. I can't believe I forgot. There, how do I look now? <laughs> you already knew it wasn't Lieutenant Ross. Why did the mole startle you? This is not happening. Please tell me I'm hallucinating or something. You really are a smart man, Lieutenant Colonel. Oh my god, this dude is so fucked. He's got the photo out and everything. He's got the photo out in the perfect position for blood to splash on it when he dies. I've got a wife and daughter waiting for me. So the last thing I'm gonna do is die on them. <laughs> Oh, fuck off. You look surprised. What the hell are you? Oh, fuck off. Is he dead? Does this guy really just kill him wearing his wife's face? Of course he does. Put him through. Look, Hughes, I don't have time for daughter stories. Please have time for dozens and dozens of daughter stories. This poor man just loves his offspring. You throw away your lives for nothing. Wow. Wow. How dare this show. I can't believe I didn't see this coming a mile away. God damn it. Could he have just been a normal father and resented his wife and kids? I'm not even gonna fucking hug my kid if I have one. I know it'll be safest for everyone that way. Oh man, this is hands down the best apple pie ever. Oh, well at least Edward's enjoying his apple pie. I had such a good time staying with them. They're both really great people. Yeah, but Hughes is obnoxious. He doesn't know when to shut up and he spoils his daughter rotten. Oh God, Ed, what are you doing? Never mind. Turns out this show is exclusively sadistic. Why are they putting all that dirt on Daddy? They're burying him, dear. But if Daddy gets buried, then you won't be able to do all his work. Oh my God, have this conversation before you bring your daughter to her fucking dad's funeral. Have some fucking courtesy. Nobody wants to hear the daughter of the deceased learn what death is in real time. <laughs> Daddy said he has a bunch of work he needs to do! No! Stop it! Stop putting dirt on him! Daddy! Make your kid watch up or something before you bring her to her first funeral. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I'm fine. Except, it's a terrible day for rain. What do you mean? It's not raining. I mean the rain coming out of my eyes. Yes, it is. Oh, oh no, he did mean the rain coming out of his eyes. Oh, poor sweet baby. There's got to be an officer above me that's ordered him to keep quiet. Most likely someone of senior ranking. It's wild that Fuhrer Bradley didn't invite Mustang into the loop. I wonder if it was because he was part of the Ishavalan extermination, but it just seems weird that Mustang isn't a part of the trustworthy little group that they've created. Doesn't sound like you to mix your public and personal concerns. There's no difference between the two. I will become the Fuhrer of this country, and I will take vengeance for Hughes. Oh, there it is. I think I see what might have gotten Mustang on the Fuhrer's bad side. I'm not sure where all these political aspirations came from, but I'm glad I'm caught up on Mustang's character. And that is episodes 9 and 10 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I almost called it Mustang Brotherhood. Really fucking wild uh, that Maze just died. Maze Hughes, right? Crazy. I'm so excited. The like leading question that I am excited to have answered is who the fucking Seven Deadly Sins crew is. Cause they're so strange. And I guess maybe not alchemists. Um, but yeah, I am, despite thinking he didn't deserve to die, I am happy that Hughes died by virtue of it tells us that characters are expendable. That's pretty cool and pretty wild. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not happy he died in like a, yeah, fuck that guy. I'm just happy for what it means for the show. That's sick. Stakes have been added. 
noted. But as always, let me know what you guys thought of these episodes in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of this video as well. And I will see you guys next time. Hold on to me, baby. Won't you come a little closer when I need for now? I wrote down what you said to me, baby. But can't make what you will.